Hello, and thanks for joining us for this overview presentation of the North 49 customer portal for Sage. Uh, at present, we support both Sage 300 and Sage Intact. The functionality is virtually identical, and I will point out certain areas where that might differ from there, but otherwise, almost everything is identical. So first of all, I would like to start with a view of the kind of the simplest part of the customer portal, and that is our click to pay. And what click to pay is, is your ability to add a link on either your invoice document or perhaps in an email that goes out to your customer when you email them the invoice. And that link uh, simply contains the URL to the customer's portal, which would typically be a subdomain of their own domain. It's going to contain the customer uh, number and the document number for payment. And really what they have to do is just click on that link and it's going to take them to one of the portal pages that allows them to do only that payment for that document alone. And that is the only thing that that will allow them to do. Uh, so first of all, what we're going to do, this is a live read of the data inside of your Sage system. So uh, we don't store any data on the portal itself. We read it and feed live uh, to either Sage 300 or Sage Intact. So the first thing we're going to do is go and check to make sure that that document is still eligible to pay. Depending upon who your payment processor is, and we will support all major payment processors, you can pay by whatever method your account is set up to do. In my case, I've got credit card and check or ACH set up here. When I click on that pay invoice button, what happens is, and you'll notice that we've taken you out to the payment gateway. Uh, so we've temporarily left the portal itself and taken you to the payment gateways vault system, which means that both us and you by extension have no PCI compliance requirements here. It's only the payment portal that is taking the credit card details, not us. We never touch the card, nor do you by extension. So we have no PCI compliance issues here. When they click that pay now, and you'll notice we filled in all the necessary details. All they'll have to fill in is your credit card information. When they click that pay now button, we'll send that transaction off to the payment gateway. They will return to us a post back, which we will then send directly into Sage to fulfill that payment. And it will reconcile against the customer, the, uh, the document number, all you have to do if it's Sage 300 is post it, it automatically goes into Sage Intact and it is, it is completed. So that's all you have to do. It's eliminated you having to touch that transaction whatsoever. The customer is immediately presented with a receipt on screen that they can print and they'll also get an email saying that they have made that payment. So everything is done. So that's the, the click to pay. Now let's take you to the full portal, which allows a lot more capability. This is what the login screen looks like. And so a lot of this stuff you will change in control. So number one, you'll change this logo that's up in the top left here. And you notice there's a quite a bit of real estate here and you can do something like we've done, your logo with some kind of messaging here. And it's just an image file. You can point and click at that image file and it will then replace it. We support multiple languages. Currently we're English and French, but if you have a requirement for another language, just reach out and we'll be happy to make those changes. This is also under your control, the welcome title and the welcome message. And you can change that very easily in the administration side. And then of course, your contact details down here. There are a couple of ways that customers can register for the portal. Number one, you can control it completely, which means they'll have to reach out to you. You will grant them credentials to log in. The other way that most of our customers do will be to request it themselves. So they'll fill in this form. Um, and with, once that's filled in, there's two ways this can happen. Number one, they can wait for you to approve them. Or number two, if they answer a, I call it the skill testing question, but it is some verification that they know the account that you should have access to it. It might be their last invoice number, invoice date, payment date, something like that. If they answer that question correctly, uh, you can grant them immediate access. And when that happens, there's all kinds of notifications that go on inside the system by email, by Slack, or by Microsoft Teams to let you know somebody has registered for the portal and perhaps even to let that AR customer know that a new user has registered to access their portal. And you can have more than one user accessing the portal for any one AR customer. So let's log in and have a, have a look at what, uh, what the portal looks like. Sorry, I should have uh, checked my credentials there. That's uh, this guy. Just do that and get logged in. <clears throat> so there's a few icons that you will see here. What shows up here is going to depend upon what you have subscribed to. So if you didn't subscribe to the quick order entry part, that's just not going to show up. If you don't want to do online payments, anything to do with payments and prepayments and credit cards is not going to show up either. Most folks do this because they want to do the online payments for their customers. So those are usually the main things you'll get, the basic portal plus the online payments. 
fewer folks do the order entry, but that's certainly available to you and we'll touch on that very quickly. So first of all, you get uh, on the account activity, it's just a summary bit of information about that account, recent payments, recent invoices, that kind of thing. The real meat of the, of the portal comes in when you start to look at the documents that are inside the system for you. And by default, we're gonna show you everything that sits inside of accounts receivable for that customer. Now you as the merchant can control which documents they see. There's simple check boxes inside the admin side of this portal that allows you to turn these on and off. So you can limit what shows up on this screen here. And you can also show open or sorry, your customer can filter by open or all documents. And you'll also notice that when you click on a document here, you can drill down and get the details of that document on an on-screen print. Uh, or if you click the print button, you can get an HTML rendering, which can then be printed uh, or saved to a PDF that they can save for themselves. So this means that all those calls that say, I can't find my invoice, I didn't get my invoice, can you resend it to me? They can now do that for themselves and save your staff that effort. So as I said before, the real meat of this thing comes in on the pay account side of things. And that means that your customers can go and look at the invoices that are outstanding and pay them. If they wanna just click on one and expand it a little bit to see what's on there, they can certainly do that. Uh, but all they have to do is click pay, or they can select them all or click individual ones they wanna pay. When they hit that make payment button, they're gonna be exposed to a couple of different things. So number one, you have the ability to store a card token. It's only the token, you never ever see the full card, nor do we ever touch that full card. But they have the option of saying, I wanna store this card for future use. And if that's the case, all they have to do is hit that make payment button. The next thing you're gonna see is their receipt saying you paid it, thank you, all's good to go. Unless of course it failed for some reason and we'll get that error message. But again, this all gets automatically sent into your Sage system and it's gonna be reconciled through that. If they want to use a new card, they can certainly do that. They click on new card, they can opt to save it. They click that make payment. Then they're going to be presented with that same payment screen at the payment processor's gateway. And that's where they'll fill in those card details. If they're set up for ACH, they're presented with a slightly different view. And that is basically this. It shows them what the account uh, details are that we need that they will then enter onto that payment screen. So that's the payment side of things. And that was a bit of the stored card side of things as well. And a couple of options with storing cards. If you're using Sage 300 with an integrated system, you can store them within Sage 300, or you can store them on the portal. Um, under view orders, now this is where, you, if you're using sales orders or order entry, they can actually have a look at all of their outstanding orders in the system or quotes if the system supports quotes. Also, you can look at this by order or by item. So this is essentially, a bit of a back order list. This is the items or that I'm waiting for from this particular vendor and or from you, sorry, as the merchant. And this is the order that they sit on. And inside of here, if your system is Sage 300 that supports quotes, you can actually look at quotes, you can approve quotes, and your customer can turn that quote into an order right from this screen. Let's take a quick look at the online quick order entry here. And this is really just the ability for your customers, and this would have to be somebody who's a bit familiar with your, with your uh, product line, of course. So let's say I wanted to order a calculator, uh, and this can be entirely keyboard driven. And if I want to click on that calculator to order it, we have the ability to display images here, uh, additional item information that sits inside that item record as well, and we just simply add it to the order. They can place an order, which will be a live order, or perhaps placed on hold within your Sage system, or if your system supports quotes, we can actually place a quote that you can then go and review and approve for that customer. That is the quick order entry side of things. And that was a very quick tour of the North 49 customer portal. Um, certainly feel free to get in touch with us if you'd like to discuss this a little bit further. I'll display our contact details here in one second for you. And then you can have a look at that <clears throat> contact details there to reach out to us if you need to discuss the customer portal a little further. Thanks for your time and thank you for watching.